Uh, it's great to be talking about some of the trends that we've observed this year. Um, I think that, you know, clearly this is an enormous topic. There, there, there could actually be many different subjects, but I think that one of the, one of the clear um, changes that we have seen is the digitization of consumer behavior. Um, this was largely driven during the pandemic when a lot of industries like retail had to pivot and change very quickly so that customers could actually um, obtain their products using e-commerce platforms or direct-to-consumer platforms. Um, and what we've noticed um, is that a large percentage of consumers that, that were forced to use these platforms because of the pandemic um, they're now sticking with those platforms. So we're now seeing that a lot of areas like e-commerce has had a dramatic boost and maybe several years of growth has all come in the last 18 months. So, so that kind of change in behavior is one thing, but I think we're seeing this across a wide array of industries. I mean, even if you look at things like grocery and food delivery, um, apps like Uber Eats, um, Deliveroo, um, Grubhub, all these kind of services are, are growing at a very rapid rate. Um, so there's clearly a digitization of consumer behavior. This is also being enhanced by the Internet of Things and the adoption of smart speakers in the home. Um, and during this year, they, the smart speakers like the Google Home, the, the Amazon Echo, they've been selling about 40 million units each quarter. So, you know, each 12 weeks, we're seeing tens of millions of new homes adopting this technology. And again, that just reinforces this idea that, you know, you, you create an Amazon shopping list, for example, and you can just speak to your device and then tell it when you want your shopping delivered. So, so again, we're seeing consumer behavior being shaped by technology. Um, I think that another area that's been very important has been cloud computing this year. But not in the sense that businesses are using cloud to, to support their own functionality, but just the fact that without the cloud storage and cloud um, capabilities, we wouldn't have been able to have this kind of um, office workers working from home uh, or now offering the sort of hybrid working options that are allowing people to, to move between the office and the home. So I think that there will be a much greater focus on cloud technologies that allow people to work more flexibly, um, as well as um, cloud storage technologies. Um, and then one final point, um, something interesting that I've observed this year is in the area of customer service, where we've seen um, a merger of this cloud technology, allowing us to build virtual um, customer service platforms, um, combine that with work from home, and you can create a, a gig economy environment for customer service. So this gig CX, I think is going to become much more important, you know, as we start to look forward. But, but this year, we've certainly seen companies taking that option seriously. Well, I think that I've probably got five or six different areas where I would say we should be focused on as we move into the next year. Um, certainly, Peter mentioned looking back at artificial intelligence. Um, but I think that definitely AI will become much more significant this year. Um, certainly in the area of interacting with customers, um, we're seeing predictive analytics really becoming very, very important. And, you know, this is because brands can use um, insight into customer behavior to know when you want something or when you might order something, um, what you're likely to respond to in terms of offers and deals, um, uh, but also to be able to proactively intervene. Um, it, it should be possible to determine when you're likely to cancel a subscription and then, then to, to intervene to um, keep that customer remaining loyal. So I certainly think that there's some very practical applications of AI that we're going to see. Um, I mentioned GigCX as an area that is being um, proven, and I suppose um, it was very nascent in the past year, but I really believe that as we go into next year, it won't just, it won't be a nascent technology anymore. It will be a platform that all of the major customer service specialists are using. And so, you know, that, that's quite a complex mix of cloud-based services, um, security services, 
being able to deploy a large global workforce of people based at home. It involves payment systems so people can be paid um, as they work rather than collecting a salary. So, so again, that, that's going to be a, a major change, I believe, in the next year. And not so much because um, we will even call it Gig CX, but I think it will become something that's very much blended with more general customer service solutions. Um, I think that wearables will be um, more important in the coming year. And that's more to do with um, what we've seen in the pandemic with the inability to in engage with health services. So I think that, you know, we will see technology playing a much stronger role in proactive health monitoring um, and control of um, health conditions. So th that's, that's something that we've seen, you know, people doing things like using Fitbits or measuring their steps on their smartphone. I just think that we're going to take that to, to the next step and actually have direct links with health services and potentially even where you have countries with a nationalized um, health service like the UK, like Canada, you know, perhaps there could be a more proactive uh, prevention strategy, um, preventing illness rather than just treating it. So I think that that's, that's definitely, medical technology is definitely going to be a, a big growth area. Um, I think the metaverse is something that's also going to be extremely important moving forward. Although I think that the way that Facebook has described the metaverse at present is very much looking several years into the future. I don't think that, that you know, we will all be engaging using avatars just yet, but I think that what you will start to see in the next year or so is sort of the early adopters and early stage investors getting into this world and just trying to find out, you know, how can we build a sort of parallel universe using technology um, that, that can actually engage with people. Um, and I think a good example might be um, retail. You know, if you could imagine um, visiting a department store virtually um, where you could try out anything, you know, you can just pick things off the shelves and you can try them out and you can use them and you can test stuff out before you actually go ahead and buy it in the real world. So I think that, you know, smart brands, possibly in retail first, will be thinking about this technology and thinking, well, how does this move on from traditional e-commerce, you know, which is essentially just a, a, you know, a searchable list of stock online. Um, you know, can, can we move on and can we make the sort of online experience, um, experience to another level so that you can actually use the products before you buy them? And then I think that um, finally, I think that there could be greater regulation around technologies. So around things like social media platforms, um, the Federal Trade Commission in the US is already talking about a breakup of Facebook into the component parts, like making WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook, all sort of separate companies. Um, you know, clearly there's a lot of opposition to that. People saying that, um, you know, th these kind of services already exist in China. So it's becoming a sort of um, a geopolitical fight as well about, you know, who's going to lead the future of the internet and technology? Is it the US or is it China? Um, but I think that one thing that may well happen is the fear over a breakup may lead companies like Facebook to really accelerate how fast they are developing many of their services. Um, so we will see things like um, uh, cryptocurrencies being included within WhatsApp messaging and things like this. So the deeper that they can get into the lifestyle of the consumer, the more unlikely it is that uh, these type of services can be broken up in, in the near future. So, I mean, that, that's, a, that's a sort of a summary from, from CX across AI to, uh, to the metaverse. Um, I hope that's a, a good few areas for, for 2022.